Hunt 41 is a celebration of American waterfowl hunting. The 41 species of ducks and geese are the roadmap for us to tell the stories of the various regions, styles of hunting, and most importantly, the people that are representing this great pursuit of ours. This is the original series, The Chase for the 41. target divers but the coolest thing about targeting the divers is you're still gonna shoot puddle ducks here so the variety is, is endless and uh, one year I was driving down this road some pheasants ran across it and back then it didn't have to be posted to hunt it so I chased the pheasants in there of course they all jumped the river 100 yards ahead of me but I got up to the river and kind of checked and all of a sudden some golden eyes went by and shot one I'd take off my pants and walk out there and get it. I was like, that is freaking awesome, a gold knife. This is neat. The divers just continuously flew up and down the river. So I went home, painted some flambeaux into gold knives and grabbed my float tube. And I started getting into cans, reds, buffalo heads. I mean, hooded mergansers, everything. I was like, holy crap, this is funner than shooting puddle ducks. The 10th largest state in this land of ours, the state of Utah. Founded on the north by Idaho and Wyoming, on the east by Wyoming and Colorado, on the south by Arizona, and on the west by Nevada. Utah is often referred to as the center of scenic America, and justly so. Thousands of years ago, most of what is now the state of Utah was covered by an enormous lake. At one time, it was almost 350 miles long and 1,000 feet deep. The state of Utah is rich in natural resources. Although only a little more than 3% of the land is tilled, due to the success of pioneer irrigation projects, agriculture has long been one of the state's principal industries. The soil of Utah is generally rich, the climate ideal for highly diversified cropping programs. Utah is often referred to as the center of scenic America, and justly so. Also, many refuges have been established for the protection and preservation of migratory birds and other forms of wildlife. My addiction with the divers started with you because it was so fast. You know, puddle ducks and everything, and hunting the sloughs when they're you know, the mallards and everything, the puddle ducks would come in nice and slow and they're really pretty and backpedaling. And the first time I came out and hunted divers with you and how fast they were, it's just missing and missing shots and yeah. missing shots. And it just like almost ate me up to where it's just like, oh my gosh, like this is tough, well, you know? And so. not to mention, I mean, who laughs more? 36 year old guy shooting divers or a 36 year old guy shooting puddle ducks? I think yeah. every guy laughs more. Yeah, they haven't drawn down the water yet. Like we used to hunt them sides, but it's almost about over your waders. It's kind of. <laughs> Yeah, it's a little bit too deep for my liking. Yeah, me too. 
You might be able to break through there. It looked yesterday it looked like you could probably break through and get there, but it just seemed there's more birds here. You got one with the gun door or no? Yeah. I hate it, but yeah. That's that was one of my original boats, but I li I liked it actually. Well, I you built them. But they're using one of my old layout boats. It's just kind of cool to see, you know. Mm -hmm. That is really not not that I invented anything. I just made a pretty cool layout boat and kind of got the sport introduced here. This one's more designed back when I weighed about 40 pounds lighter, uh -huh. and I built it around me and uh, for here actually. You see it pretty often, guys using your old boats. Oh yeah. You, you buy the 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 normal layout boats that they use on the Great Lakes. They're awesome boats, but they have a little bit more of a, whole, a higher profile and a splash guard, and the, the ducks just don't react good to it here, especially the puddle ducks. I mean, it's hard to bang them out. So some of the styles that are like my older ones just sell really good here. That seems like that company had a good name, and the boats were made good too. So. We can go silver salmon fishing and brown hunting. So let me know. I, I got the contact still. Yeah, I'll hit you up. All right. Okay. Yeah, we'll talk to you soon. Swan decoys, we might be able to throw out less duck decoys. Oh, yeah. The way we set up these layout boats is just to hide them. And then my target species, I like to put 30 yards straight out in front of the boat. So they stick out like a sore thumb. So like, I'm, obviously I'm gonna put cans out there because that's what I want to shoot today. But all the other ducks will decoy. previous carnage. Yeah. Really, this, anytime you lay out hunt here in Utah, if you get like a 10 mile per hour wind, it doesn't matter what the weather is, you'll see birds constantly on the move. The sad part is one of these days, I'm not gonna be strong enough to do that. Whoa, crap, that's slippery. Those are the ones I make and I cast them to fit that flock of flicker inside of them. And when I molded it to make them, I, I don't like the way they look on the water, so I put them inside of a decoy, just trying to be different. So back in the day, it was a four bird limit, but I smashed them and just had them keep coming in. I mean, I, the adrenaline rush and the excitement, I mean, it's never gone away, it's still here. time of year where it's gotten cold they typically feed later in the afternoon typically the warmest part of the day so there's about three and a half hours which should be between 1 and 4 30 today <clears throat> in on the closest drake to me so you can key on it too. Okay. 
Sounds good. I just can't stop them sometimes. Got widgeon, buffalo head, gadwall, and bluebill. Selfie shot here. Out here in uh, the great, what is this, Salt Lake region? Great Salt Lake area, Farmington Bay. That's right, Farmington Bay, giving up the hot spot right here. And uh, we're having fun, we're getting them. Gotta get out from that camera and shoot, uh, bud. We're just gonna swap, you ready to film? You know, I, I was just telling Kevin about this, that I really love shooting divers, but since I just got back into this about six years ago, you know, hunted in high school, but since I just got back into it, doesn't matter the bird. If they're doing it, I want to shoot. <laughs> and miss half the time. I'm ready, bud. Pretty good bird dog, huh? <laughs> Back. Back. <laughs> so fast. It's a bluebill. Juvie Drake. This is the first. First for me right here. Huh? Different perspective for you now. It's just one of those things you just so cool about duck hunting is you learn about all these different types of hunters that really focus on the species and get really into it. And you can, you know, sitting here, you get it. You know, you're like, look at this, look at this beautiful you view. Front, <laughs> they were so close. Right here, right here, right here, right here, Ben. Right side, right side, right side, right side. Oh, you hit him. Get ready. Well, you know, Tyler hit me up about well, a little over a year ago and was, we really want to make a film about hunting all 41 species. You know, immediately I was stoked to, to be, just to start chewing on it. As we all kind of were chatting more and more about it, it was just just so many different types of waterfowl hunters, and I think they all have their their thing that's cool about them. And man, to do this, it's going to take several years, and it's going to be you know a project that I want to be really proud of. You know, I want to really do justice to American waterfowl. summer sausage.
Where's the other one? He's, He's on shoulder. the other side. Over! Heels. Hey, Tony. Send him. I, I, you know, I grew up hunting these marshes with my with my dad. You know, he he took me everywhere. We'd just hunt actually just over kind of south of here. We we'd walk into a place called Paveros. We'd walk in there and, and we'd go hunt. We could only hunt usually Saturdays or Sundays after my dad got off work on Saturdays or Sunday mornings. And I would, I mean, I would wait all day for my dad to get home. I'd have everything ready, just waiting for him to get home so we could jump in the truck and go. You know, this is before I could even shoot, and I was so stoked to go. And we'd go, and he'd shoot a couple ducks, and we'd come, we'd, you know, bring those ducks home. And I would sit there and just admire those ducks for hours and hours and hours and hours. And, hours. and even the next day, and my dad's like, hey, we got to clean those. And, and I didn't want to clean them. I just wanted to just sit and look at them, you know. I'd cake the wings, keep the wings. I'd draw pictures of them. I, I mean... I just, I, there's something about ducks that have always fascinated me. Now around here, a lot of people don't do diver calls at all. It helps a lot. Yeah. Right now? I mean, obviously not just right there, but. Yeah. <laughs> I swear it's called them in before. It's called them in it's worked yeah. before. Just not that time. <laughs> Probably it opens up again, but I wonder if we went out one of those other flows that were further up. There were some boat, airboat trails going up those. Yeah. And I think that might be a better better route. Because we're going up the main flow. Yeah. So we're gonna be in the frag. It's Fragmites. It's a base of species here in Utah. They uh, don't know how it got here, but it's taking over the whole Great Salt Lake wetland complex and sucks up all the water and Pretty much impassable. Punches holes in your dog's feet, holes in waders. Makes for a good hide, but that's about it. We're living in it right now. Yeah. We're gonna try to spin the boat back up there. We're uh, we're actually we we went too far down the channel, so we need to head back up and see if we can take one of those other airboat trails across the flats, yep. across, so. Nick, we need reverse. <laughs> took on a bunch of water and the bilge pump went out so we took off one of the hoses of the bilge pump and trying to make a trying to make some sort of a way to get water out of there. Yeah. 
conditions changed, the lake dried up, leaving only a few smaller bodies of water. The largest of these is the Great Salt Lake. There is so much salt in the water that it readily supports the human body. It's impossible to sink. Indeed, Utah is an important state. If you ever have the opportunity, visit Utah. Not only will you enjoy your visit, Utah will enjoy having it. I started traveling around the country hunting. We're spoiled here. Oh! Look at that. Is that a baby? Loaded one shell. That's all I had time for. The first GSL green wing tail drag. Divers, geese, puddle ducks, and one body of water is different from the other one. And the way you get there, it's... And where else can you go with this backdrop that we have with these mountains? This Great Salt Lake? Not, not many. I mean, there's nothing like it. You know, for, for me, the most exciting thing about this project is doing it with you three gentlemen. But the most thing is getting back to the grassroots of waterfowl hunting and no negativity. I mean, this is a positive sport. And, <clears throat> I mean, we're all brethren in it. And cistern, if that's a word. We don't have a platform or some sort of no avenue for us to to, to be able to help other people out and to, to get them involved in the sport, the sport is going to keep fading away. And all, all this history and all this, this legacy and this heritage is going to be lost. That people need to learn and it needs to be passed on. And, and if, we don't, if we don't share our experiences and share our you know, passion and our um, you know, little things we've learned over the years, then this, this is going to die. Tony and Rich have been my biggest mentors in water bowing. And I think that it just needs to be spread. That needs to happen more again. It's just everybody helping out each other and teaching each other things. Well, yeah, that exactly. And you know, I want you guys to think about something right now. How did we all meet? <laughs> Through waterfowling. <laughs> I mean, the greatest people I know I met because I waterfowl hunt. Me and Nick met in math class. <laughs> My goodness. <laughs>
this year having the three states that we're going to get after. Just finished up Utah, heading to California, and then uh, trip three or so. Uh, we got a couple ideas. East Coast, we'll see, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, we're, we we're kind of excited to like, oh man, this, this could go in a lot of directions. But the, the episodes that we're going to create of this are going to be extremely fun. And um, I think, you know, I can't wait to get them out there. We are just, we just love to hunt ducks and geese. And that's why this is happening, you know. And we're going after the core that's been recognized as the 41. And down the road, I would love to learn more about all the different subspecies and different ducks are being added to the list and there's just uh american waterfowl is is an amazing thing you know what we have here in the states and the freedom that we have to hunt yeah. so much public yeah. land and private land and it's amazing you know we've really been gifted with with some amazing opportunity in the united states i'm excited i'm excited just hope a lot of people join in you know yeah. be part of this with us i mean this isn't just our show i mean this is uh this is for everyone yeah.